Got a recorded midweek update today. Pre-recorded. Uh, hello Mark. How are we doing mate? Um, can we just have your thoughts on the Tunbridge game on Saturday? Uh, yep. Um, the thoughts are it was uh, definitely a very poor game. Um, ruined by the sending off. Sending off was harsh um, on Tunbridge. Um, but I thought, if I'm being totally honest, I thought the all-round quality was appalling uh, on the day. Um, you know, my players have got a habit of, of doing just enough at times. I thought we'd shirked that last year with some big wins against good clubs. Um, and, uh, you know, we went home feeling like it was a defeat, really. Um, we didn't celebrate it. it. It was the opposite very much. We was disappointed with our um, how clinical we were and the, the pace we played the game at. So um, I think if I'm being straight, that game being representative of a National League game, it wasn't. Um, so I was disappointed. Um, but of course, that is bemoaning our luck, isn't it? I mean, there'll be times this year where we'd do anything to get a really rubbish 3-1 win. Um, but it was a rubbish 3-1 win. That's the bottom line. Um, and I know, Mark, you want to mention around the uh, ground and uh, the management around there. Uh, well, no, just to address it, really. I mean with my kind of chairman hat on um we um there was a bit of discontent saturday and uh we've had some i don't know regular kind of issues this year we've not resolved R really um just to make it very clear to all of our supporters um we want the ground to be absolutely rocking we want singing we want an atmosphere we want everything i think there's been a, a bit of confusion the club very much prides itself on, um, we are a family friendly club, our kind of general genre is families um, or probably people over the age of 50 and we've got a kind of real young element as well but we don't really have that kind of part in the middle. But, but the bottom line is our, our ethos is to be a family friendly club. With that in mind we launched a set of anti-social behaviour policies. Um, there's been wrongly touted um, within the club even that it's based on residents. It's nothing to do with residents whatsoever. Um, although it's always important, you know, in, in 20 years, we've always recognised our responsibilities to our neighbours. Um, and of course, we'd always, you know, be, be concerned with our neighbours always. But our policies are in place because as a football club being family friendly, we want to make sure that um, we have antisocial behaviour policies in place. And this is no different to any football club um, at any meaningful level. Um, what we've not done a great job of is managing these and helping people understand what they are. They are no different to any other club. It is just, uh, and the management of them through um, our own security company, which is being reviewed as we speak, um, and our own staff um, is being reviewed behind the scenes. Uh, I want to make one thing really clear. We are really happy to get away fans that make loads of noise we're really happy for home fans to make loads of noise in the same way you would at any football ground. It is a football ground and um, we recognise that. So we will, be, um, we will be putting out something official um, through our uh, fan page on Facebook and through um, our programme that just highlights our kind of policies and nothing changes. We all get back to enjoying football and, um, you know, being really candid, people know me for being candid, um, apologies um, if there's been a lot of misinterpretation of, of us trying to launch anti-social behaviour policies. It's been massively, hugely um, wrongly managed in terms of uh, by the people we rely upon. Uh, it's been misinterpreted um, and um, that's been addressed and we're just going to get back to uh, get back to enjoying the football, making lots of noise, getting behind the boys, okay? Simple as that, but I wanted to address it because you know people, home and away fans, pay their money, and the last thing they should be getting is um, if managed in the wrong way. So uh, as a club, we're progressive, and we always address things, and, and that's been addressed, and there'll be there'll be a formal an announcement about that soon. Thanks, Mark. I'm sure everyone will appreciate that. Big load of waffle update. for those yeah. that tuned in to talk about football. Mo moving on to talking about football, what's the squad update for tomorrow night? The squad update is they're all uh, they're all fit. And for the first time this season, there's going to be two or three, not even named, uh, so there'll be a few tears, um, uh, as always, when you leave people out. But um, 
uh, they've all declared themselves in. That's the bottom line. So we've got a great squad to choose from. Thoughts about, about having? Well, I mean, I, it, our club's for the first. We, I don't, you know, I don't. There's no gamesmanship involved. The fact is, everybody knows we're a small fish in this league. Um, in terms of our, you know, our stock, if you like, we um. The club's full of first. This is the first time we've ever played a team that is um, essentially a full-time team. They, they train in most days. Um, um, Paul Doswell is a great manager with a great track record. Um, I think they've played some great sides so far. That the weight of teams haven't have played versus us, we, they would have had probably the tougher start. Um, at the end of the season, I don't think we'll be in the same. Um, I don't think we'll be in the same area of the league as haven't haven't a rightfully one of the favourites. I think if they um, um, they'll they'll you know Paul will know exactly how to to work this division out pretty quickly. Um, I think it's going to be a ginormous test for the club and the team. Um, and um, I think our strengths are normally match planning. Um, I think we're good at it. Um, we've got a good structure. We know. We know how they play. We know that they know how we play. We have two or three different ways of playing. We, we, we've got a squad that's versatile. We are, we're more than happy, like we've done already this season, to go and set up completely differently to our sort of factory setup, if you like. Um, so we'll be utilising experience in particular formations to do our best to nullify having, but much respect for the club, great support base, some awesome players there and a really experienced manager and another first for Dorking Wanderers um, taking on a team of a full-time nature. Um, it'd be interesting to see where we're at. And uh, finally, just uh, the supporters, is there a coach? Uh, yeah, it's nearly board? full up, nearly full up and loads of people going direct and uh, that's great to see. Um, great to see. The boys will really appreciate that and hopefully they get behind the goal and, 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 and sing along and get their flags out and, uh, you know, I no, no doubt the boys are giving a good account and um, you know we would be second favourites for this match um, but there's not a team in the league that don't worry about playing us and my aim this year really was to be competitive um, to make sure that no one ever saw us on a bit of paper and thought it's an automatic three points and uh, so far that, that's been the case and we'll, we'll be going there tomorrow night to win we're not going there to you know, we're, we're, this season's a, a good one for us because we can enjoy it. We, you know, we're not in a position whereby we could have ideas of grandeur. Uh, so the two clubs are in very much different positions in terms of objectives, and we're in the fortunate position of enjoying tomorrow night as one of the reasons we work hard, hard to get promoted. So that's it, really. Brilliant. That's where it's at. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. Good luck tomorrow. Cheers, mate.